Hello, miracle workers. This is Kevin Rice. It took me seven minutes just to get on Facebook Live here. Um, I'm with my my spouse, Aaron, with me, and I decided to really go um, single tonight because of the rain in West Palm Beach, uh, which is really torrential, and uh, so I'm here. So look, we're talking about A Course in Miracles. This is the Academy of Spiritual Awakening. So this is just me and you tonight. And I really want to communicate with you um, a couple of things. I spoke with Unity uh, Stewart, with John, uh, Reverend uh, John Pelletri, and also Reverend Jude Denning on Sunday afternoon. And we had a wonderful time and uh, they recorded the, the workshop, and I think that we're going to be able to uh, review it uh, in the future, I hope. Uh, we're going to figure it out. And, but tonight I just want to talk to you about a couple of things here. The first thing I want to talk about, and the reason, the reason why I'm talking about this tonight is because when I spoke on Sunday afternoon, there were two points that I did not have an opportunity to really communicate with the students there. And so I thought, well, what the hell? I'm just going to uh, do it tonight here on Facebook Live. Um, I really want to talk about control. Control. People who are having control issues. So it's something that we have to look very closely and very deeply within our own psyches. So whenever we, for instance, believe that other people are oriented toward controlling, uh, many times it's because that we ourselves are control oriented as well. So let's just talk about a few things here together. Why do we want to be in control of everything within our experience in this time and space continuum? From the perspective of A Course in Miracles and the perspective of the way of mastery, that ultimately that we are in comp competition with God for our happiness. So in reality, look, God's love and God's goodness and God's joy and peace and goodness has been given to us right now. And we begin to understand that within our being. When we step back and we allow that light within us to step forward, to guide us and to lead us to an awareness of who we are and what we are doing. However, the voice of fear or the voice of the ego comes in and wants to take control of our experience. Now we do this all the time. We do. And the scribe, uh, the scribe of A Course in Miracles, Helen Chuckman, had her own issues with this as well. She was in a hierarchy, a university, Columbia University in New York City, and she was herself experiencing a competition, for instance, between herself and a colleague that she was working with. And she looked at this dynamic very closely and deeply. And she was in communication with Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, we are not in competition with anyone or anything. And that competition is not coming from outside of you. It comes from within your own mind. You are essentially in competition with your own self. Okay. Now, this is why this leads into an issue of control. When you believe that dynamic that you have produced yourself, that you have miscreated yourself, is real, and then you act accordingly, then you have to control each person, 
each dynamic, each relationship, each, each uh, work relationship that you are into. Okay, so you have to look at that. And essentially, what is really happening is that we are creating our own image of God in place of accepting what has already been given to us as well. You know, we are essentially substitute teachers of God. And we have done that miserably. Miserably. Now, A Course in Miracles does tell us this statement. It is not up to you to change your brother, but merely to accept him as he is. Any attempt you make to correct a brother means that you believe that correction by you is possible. And this can only be the arrogance of the ego. Let me restate that last sentence there. Any attempt you make to correct a brother means that you believe correction by you is possible and thus can only be the arrogance of the ego. Now folks, let's just talk about this very clearly and simply tonight. I know that within you and within me is a temptation to look out into the world and to see it as broken and that it needs to be fixed. We look out into the world and we see it as sick and it needs to be healed. We look out upon the world and we see it as full of conflict and devastation. Okay, and it needs to be fixed. Here is the problem. The problem is that we believe that that correction, that improvement comes from me. And it doesn't. Number one, what is happening in time and space that we are looking at right now is already over and done with. It is an effect. It's an effect. It does not in and of itself have any meaning or a charge whatsoever. The only charge that what we experience in time and space is merely an illusion. The charge comes from me when I place a value or a meaning to it. And at that moment, it brings value and meaning to me, which largely is meaningless. Okay. However, true correction can occur only uh, on one level in our experience, and that is the level of mind, the mind. Our minds are so powerful, it can change events and things and people almost immediately when we see it rightly when we see it through the vision of our experience in this world. I want to remind, I, I want to remind uh, yourself, yeah, I want to remind you of a, a one statement in A Course in Miracles. It's from what A Course in Miracles calls the laws of chaos, okay, or the first dynamic of the ego, the first step that we, st- uh, that we step into the, an awareness of a hellish experience. And that first step is when I look at the world or a person or an entity and saying to ourselves, to myself, look, my values, my way of living is different than the way that you are experiencing your values. And not only is it different, but it is better. My way of doing it is better than you. So therefore, I create a scenario in which I find myself in the strange dynamic of trying to correct what we believe is broken. 
Okay, and we want to do it through the level of behavior, and we're not doing that. We have to go to where the cause is, in the level of the mind. Now, all correction occurs at this level of mind. Again, not in the realm of form. This is a course in content and not in form of any time. Because any, any movement or any true correction that occurs has to occur in our own mind. So we, we, we don't want to accept responsibility for what we are either miscreated or created. So we want to blame other people because of our ills. So let me be a little bit more specific here. So if I look at the world and I see it as broken, I have to look at my own psyche and say, hey, is there a place within my own psyche that it itself is broken? Yes. Yes, Kevin. I have experienced that brokenness. Okay, if I look at the world and I see sickness, do I have to look at myself and my own thoughts and say, hey, have I entertained the thought of sickness in my mind? Am I going to get a, a cold? Am I going to have a difficult moment with this, this sickness that I'm experiencing? Of course. I take full responsibility for what I have either miscreated or created through our own, my own thoughts. If I look at the world and I see death, for instance, and suffering, I have to look, I have that responsibility to look with inside my own psyche and say, Kevin, do you entertain and feed and give attention to thoughts of death or thoughts of sickness or suffering? Of course I do. So all of this correction, uh, correction is an inside job here, not an outside job. Job. Okay. Now, we will we try then to control that that which cannot be controlled. Now there is a reason for this. What we are experiencing in this world is temporary. It's temporal. It does not last. It is not permanent whatsoever. So what we do then, and we do this in relationships as well, okay? We get into a wonderful relationship with a man or a woman, and we tell ourselves, hey, this is going to last forever. This is permanent. And that, my friends, is a fallacy. Everything that we experience in time and space is temporal. It's temporal. What is permanent is the substance of God's love within our psyche right now. Okay? Of what it looks like right now. So, <clears throat> let me, again, be more specific regarding relationships because we want to be, we want to control that relationship, okay? That's the temptation there. So, if, so, so for instance, if I'm in a relationship with a, a, a guy, for instance, I'm in a relationship right now with Aaron Adams, okay? Now, I don't want to give myself to the fallacy that our relationship, which is naturally temporal, is going to be permanent forever, eternally, okay? That is not true. So I've confused those things. And then the other thing that I confuse is the love that we are experiencing with each other right now. Right now, we know that love is a state of being. It's permanent. It's not going to go anywhere. So we confuse that level as well by saying, oh, this love that I'm experiencing with Aaron um, is that the love that we experience 
is permanent. That is true. That is true. Uh, but we transpose it, really, by thinking that our relationships, which are naturally temporary, is permanent, and that which we experience in permanence, the love of God, is temporary. So if Aaron doesn't like me tomorrow or next year or, or next 10 years, then our love that we are experiencing right now could go away. Both of those things is an hallucination entirely. Okay, It is true that we want to move with each other and abide with each other in the beautiful hemisphere of love which is permanent and that will never go away. I will always love him here or in the hereafter. But I'm not going to be given into the fallacies that the temporal form that we communicate our love is not going to be permanent. It's going to change. Period. I know it and he knows it and the world should know it, but it doesn't. It's living with its lies, especially uh, in, our, in our relationships. So this is why, folks, that we have a temptation to try to control something that cannot, in reality, be controlled at all. Okay? This is why. In this experience I'm having with Aaron right now, he's got his quirks, right? Do you have quirks, Aaron? Yes, he does. Do I have my own quirks? Absolutely. What do we do? We accept all things as they are. We do. And we are in alignment with it or not. And the relationship and, and we've been together 15 years, and it's been a wonderful experience. We've had ups and downs, as every relationship would have. But at the end of the day, I am not here to try to control him, and he's not here trying to control me as well. And because of that, in our relationship, we are free. We are completely free. All right, folks, I'm going to continue with my spiel about control, as well as making the darkness conscious. But if you have any questions, hello Esteban, my holy brother, who we go through A Course in Miracles lessons every day. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, I'm right here for you and I can see your questions right here and I appreciate your participation. And we do invite you, by the way, to like and share because we are here to extend the message of God's love to a world that is in desperate need of it. And so your likes and share does help. Okay, we are not here to enrich Kevin Rice. Okay, we are here. Thank you, Terry. I love Terry as well. His t-shirts are love with a period. And I love it so much. And, and the love and the peace that he brings to the world as well on his Facebook Live as well. All right, so I, I, I just want to make sure be, before I move forward here that you understand what we are really talking about here, okay? Your confusion, taking that which is temporal as permanent and that which is naturally permanent, the love of God, to be temporal. All of that is your BS, your belief system, okay? So you can say as much as you want to say, hey, Kevin, I am doing my best in organizing my chaos. And you can do that as much as you want. That it, but, you know, Course in Miracles is very specific about this in chapter 30, I believe, at the very first paragraph, right? Seek not outside of yourself, for it will fail, and you will weep, weep each time a, a, an idol falls. Okay? It falls because you cannot control that which, it, which cannot be controlled. I've done a lot of counseling, counselings with couples and so forth. And the single, the single ingredient that makes the relationship fail is those 
parties unwilling to let go of their temptation to control their their brother or their sister, their, their lover, their spouse, their husband, their wife, whatever you want to call it. Let it go. I said it on Sunday afternoon at Unity of Stewart, right? Most relationships are two sets of expectations coming together to live in frustration. And you can slap a label upon it, calling it love as much as you want it to. But it doesn't make it true. It does not make it true. Okay? Uh, surrendering and placing the future in the hands of God is how we let go of our own control issues. Okay? We think that we can plan the future and control it and orchestrate it and manipulate it anytime that we want to. But when we realize the beautiful and blissful experience of completely letting go of the future and letting go of the past, then we can open beautifully the eternal, timeless now. Hi, Pam. That's how we do this. That's how we do it. By living and abiding in the now moment. Okay, let me give you an example about control here. Today, it is raining very hard, today. And it's kind of fickle. Uh, when it's going to rain hard and when it's going to have a respite from it. So, I know very well, because I can't control my students as well. I know very well that my students do not like rain. Okay. And so, if the rain comes down hard, then likely they're not coming to class. Okay? And I accept that 100%. I have no control over the weather, the rain, or the ability of people to come here with grace and no rain whatsoever, and it's a beautiful day. I have no control of this. So, I have to accept all things as they are. And so, because of that, I am here right now. I, I can't control my students. I can't control the weather. I can't control anything that is happening in time and space. Now, when I realized that, in that moment, then somebody else, some source within me, a deeper presence, does have control of what is happening right now. And it's good. It's really good. Okay? I expect right now what is happening in time and space with respect to the rain, for instance. Okay? I can extend the love of God through my creation by saying I love what's happening right now. Okay? I also acknowledge that place, the collective self, that created a condition that we call rain. I, 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 I admit that as well. I accept that fact as well. Okay? I accept it all things as they are. So I'm not seeking then to have control by trying to orchestrate things outside of me. Because all of power, all choices that occurs within time and space has to occur in my own psyche at all. I want to remember, I, I just want to remind you one more time that happiness is an inside job, not an outside job. Okay? Now, we've got about 20 minutes here that we've already gone through your control issues. And folks, if you got a problem with control issues, I'm right here. I will answer your questions. I will I will respond to your confusions about it and so forth. Okay? I'm here for you today. So, let's shift our focus this evening to another uh, statement 
Uh, I put it on a picture uh, that I had on my wall. I gave it to uh, our colleague, Reverend uh, uh, Ewell Turnquist, as a gift. And it says that enlightenment does not ask you to make figures of light, but by making the, the darkness conscious. Okay? Enlightenment is not about making figures of light, but by making the, the darkness conscious. So, now of course in Miracles tells us that the physical eyes are literally looking at darkness right now. So you can say in a way that the darkness is essentially you and I being asleep. And so our eyes are not awake whatsoever. We're asleep. You say, Kevin, why are you asleep? It's because we are looking at the world through a judgmental eyes. That's why we are asleep. The moment that I hold or harbor, even for a moment, judgment in my mind, in that moment I'm experiencing the darkness and I am asleep. I am not operating in time and space um, with a sus sus suspension of judgment whatsoever. So let me say it in a different way. The darkness that we are experiencing through our physical eyes is essentially our subconscious outwardly. That's it. And someone said to me the other night, I think it was uh, Russell Brand on uh, Stephen Colbert, reminded all of us that the universe is, consists of 70% dark matter. Okay. So yes, of course, your physical eyes are experiencing darkness in reality. We are essentially repressing what's happening in our mind outwardly. And in so doing, we are repressing it, and therefore we are seeing the effects of it quite clearly in 3D Technicolor. Okay, so we have to understand first of all that the people, the events, the, the organizations that we bump up against every day is simply our subconscious manifesting itself in our mind. So then we are seeing ourselves every day in our world. You say, Kevin, I don't like, I don't like what I am seeing in the world. Well, then you need to look at what your own mind is producing right now. You're either extending the reality of God's love with light and joy and peace and goodness and kindness and so forth, or you are listening to a voice of fear that keeps us asleep, that keeps us asleep. So folks, I'm going to give you three or four different ways that you can really approach your relationships and your world differently. Um, the first way is to understand what is really happening in your psyche. The first way to make the darkness that the physical eyes see to make it conscious is to do the first step here making it neutral, neutral. So everything that is experiencing in time and space outwardly is neutral and it's neutral because it is an effect and not a cause at all. Any charge that you get because what you are seeing externally has to come from your inside mind, okay? So when you make it neutral, when you level the playing field, then you begin to awaken to the reality of who you are. I've mentioned this earlier already. When we follow the first law of chaos, the first law of the ego, I'm, my values are different than yours, 
And not only is it different from you, but it's better than you. And because of that, I have to correct you because you're, you're not on the same page as me. When I, okay, when I do that, I'm at war. I'm on the battlefield instantly. Okay, you want to have peace right now? Let go of that notion that you're different than what is happening outside of yourself. You see this? Level the playing field in your mind. You are one with what you are experiencing right now, whether you like it or not. You are one with it. Right now we are exchanging molecules with each other and the only thing that is keeping us different is my own judgment about you and your judgment about me. And when we suspend those, those judgments, then we have an experience of unity, of oneness, of the absolute presence and being that you and I really want to extend and express each and every day in our lives, making it neutral. That is an effect. It's already over and done with in time and space. What we have to deal with is what is occurring in the eternal timeless now in this moment. Secondly is to making it innocent. Okay? There's a temptation when a, from an egoic mind that wants to see outside of itself, which they believe is real in the first place, to see sin outside of ourselves, to see what's happening in time and space to be a product of something that is evil or sinful. I've said this before, but it bears repeating that every single time that I see within my brother, but keeps us both in hell. When I release my perception of sin or evil or being bad and I lift it, then I can have an experience instead to replace it with a perception of innocence, of the holy. Now, just take a moment now about holiness. Holiness. Your innocence. My innocence. Do you know that right now, in reality, your innocence, your sinlessness is guaranteed by God right now? You don't have to do anything to improve yourself to correct yourself or other people in order to experience the innocence of the gift that has been given to you and to me. So the voice of the ego comes up and says, Hey, Kevin, wait a minute. You are sinful. You are wrong. Okay. And, and look, when you make a, when you make, when you made a, a mistake yesterday, look, when you make that mistake yesterday, that is proof that you are bad, that you are wrong, that you're full of evil, okay? So the voice of the ego wants to perpetuate within you and within me that notion that we're bad and we're not bad. And when we begin to shift our perception to the innocence that lives and moves and abides and expresses itself beautifully, then we can be happy, finally. And then thirdly, the first one was making it neutral, the second was making it innocent, and the third one is making it acceptable, acceptable. The moment that you and I look out into the world and see a notion within our mind that we play with that says, oh, what that person is doing is unacceptable and that should not be a present experience in my time and space experience. Well, here's the news flash for you. It's already in your consciousness. You wouldn't see it outwardly if it were not were if it were not would not be internally. 
That's it. Just understand that. So when you accept it as it is, I'm not saying that you couldn't uh, change your tomorrows by your thoughts. Yes, yes, you can. But we have to really acknowledge in this moment that I, when I accept all things as they are, then I can experience for myself the peace of God. When I find something that is object, uh, objectionable, that's, not a, that's a, a difficult word for me to say. When I, when I object to something in time and space, I am essentially saying to myself, I object to you, Kevin Rice. Okay? Keep in mind, we're one here. We're not seven and a half billion egos there. We are the Christ incarnate. We are the mind of God incarnate. We are the love of God in form, manifesting and expressing the reality of those things in our lives. This is the way, this is the reason why the way of mastery says continually, that you and I will continue to project what remains unhealed and unforgiven within our own minds. You say, Kevin, I don't like what's happening outside of, our, uh, of my mind right now. Look, there is nothing outside of your mind. Okay? This is not my mind. This is the projection in my mind. That's the the identity that I am tethering myself to, okay? I am not limited by this body. I'm not here by, or limited by the voice of the ego whatsoever. But I can, in this moment, step into the eternal, eter eternal, timeless now, okay? So we have to transcend the story. We have to tra transcend the narrative that we keep telling ourselves every day. We're here to transcend it, to let go. Look, my friends, and hi Lisa by the way, everyone knows that are listening to me probably what I experienced myself a little over a year ago. And I know in my life that it is my responsibility to transcend that story that occurred in a dream state. And whenever I transcend that story and let it go, yeah, I can reminisce about it, okay? But I have no charge. I, I do not see it uh, not neutral. I'm going to say it that way. I can transcend it, and when I transcend time and space and those no, uh, stories and those narratives that we keep telling ourselves over and over again, then that is when enlightenment, uh, enlightenment occurs. That is when the atonement occurs. And the atonement itself is a, correct, a corrective device. That's all it is. It's a corrective device. Because we know that the corrective device is here, not outside of our minds. You know, the Urantia, which I love by the way, the Urantia is a wonderful book. And in it, it really gives a, an imagery of what can really occur in our lives. Most people, it says, looks at the world with a backdrop that is full of darkness. And so those egoic minds then see from time to time those, those uh, figures of light from here and there and so forth. But largely what they see as a backdrop is darkness, is darkness. And the Arantia says, look, you can look at the world differently. 
you can see it differently. You can choose again. And the, and, and, and the way we view the world then is seeing the backdrop full of light. And what we see uh, between ourselves and the light is from time to time the shadowy figures that come up. Those shadowy figures can be easily dispelled and dissolved when we see the illusory nature of its presence in my life. I have to recognize that what I am dealing with and interacting with is a phenomenon. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. It is neutral. It's neutral. Now, however, saying that the world is neutral is true. But what is not true, uh, what is not neutral, are your thoughts. Your thoughts are not neutral at all. It is the most powerful mechanism given to you to experience a world of suffering or a world of peace and light and joy and goodness and happiness. That's all that we are doing. So, we then begin to see the world as a backdrop full of light instead of darkness and we do so when we suspend judgment entirely. Okay, I'm not here saying that you should not judge at all. I am saying that you're incapable of judgment of any kind whatsoever. In order for you or I to understand judgment, then we have to be informed of the environment that that person is in right now, their history, and, and all of the baggage that everybody brings into this time and space experience. So we can judge it there, we evaluate it, and so forth. What I'm saying is we are incapable of truly informing ourselves and the world about judgment. What we can do instead is when we suspend that judgment, then a higher guidance, a higher voice, begins to emerge within us, not from us, but from our source. A Course in Miracles says that God's voice speaks to you, but you do not hear it because you are preoccupied with your own voice, your own judgment about other people and about yourself. And when you begin to suspend that judgment, then the world has a backdrop of light and not darkness, of love, not fear, peace, not conflict, abundance, and not lack and limitation, so forth. There is no veil that the love of God in us together cannot lift. And I'm going to just end here with a statement from the Way of Mastery. I mentioned it to the students last week and I'm going to restate it again. There are so many powerful statements in the way of mastery that I'm just absolutely enth enthusiastic about it, frankly. It is a version of A Course in Miracles in a simple and powerful way. It really is. Hey, you all, I love you so much. It's a beautiful way of really understanding the somewhat difficult sentences in A Course in Miracles, but to see it more simply, more directly, um, without the terminologies of religion and so forth. So I really do invite you to really accept this gift here. Okay? It's not right now on our website, but you can get on Amazon quickly, and it's on Kindle too. So this is from 
uh, the way of mastery. And by the way, I'm going to be really referring to the way of mastery even more so as we move forward together, okay? It says, this has come into my field of awareness as an awesome mystery. This means that I am an awesomely powerful being. Therefore, I will look lovingly upon this ripple. Yes, I know it needs to play itself out, but as it does so, I'm going to be wise enough to see the trans transparency of it, to see the lack of effect that it really has. It doesn't change who I am. It doesn't add anything to my life. It doesn't take anything from it. It merely is an experience called life passing through the field of my awareness. If I look lovingly upon it, if I can embrace it, I can transmute it and therefore already be engaged in the process of creating a whole different kind of vibrational ripple that will create my tomorrows. What a wonderful experience. Now, I, I want to just refer to a couple of statements from the very beginning of that statement. This has come into my field of a experience as an awesome mystery. The operative word there is mystery. Look, everything that you are experiencing in time and space is at the very end of the day a mystery, which means that you and I approach life with the premise of this statement. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Show me the mystery within it. Show me it. So there, in that moment, I don't have the egoic mind saying, I know what this is. I can see it, and the evidence is right there. I don't want to listen to that voice, okay? That is the voices of the dead, telling me that they know the way to life. They don't. They haven't known it, and they're not going to know it as well. They're simply asleep. I'm not here to judge them. You can't judge a person who's simply sleeping. But I do want to operate in my life with that mentality, okay? That life is a mystery. And we want to live our lives in a way that we live and move and abide in the mystery and not in the know. And there's a huge difference between those two things. Living in the mystery opens the window and the portal of the eternal timeless now and it can go through you without obstruction. The voice that says, I know, the, the, the mind that's living in the, in the know and not in the mystery, believes that it's in control of its life and that can control the world as well. And that itself is BS. And that is why we will meet it each and every time we do with failure over and over again. The second statement of this paragraph from The Way of Mastery says, this means that I am an awesomely powerful being. You are a powerful being. You are. You may not reject that right now, but I want you to consider something with me right now. Look, your mind is split. It's split. Okay? Half of your mind is awake because you are as God created you and not what you made of yourself. The other part of your mind is asleep. It's the part of your mind that's trying to create its own authorship, its own reality. Okay? So you essentially have thoughts that create naturally, aligning with the thoughts of God, 
And then you have the thoughts of miscreation, where I or you have miscreated what we are experiencing right now. That miscreation will take uh, and manifest itself as, as form, as death, as loss, as limitation and suffering. All of those things are experienced right now because we gave it energy, that we gave a charge to those things. And when we do that, it's going to create in our world events that reflects creation and love or the miscreation or fear that I give myself to each and every day. So I, that is why I am 100% responsible for what I am experiencing here in time and space in this realm. 100%. Because I know that my mind, as well as yours, is awesome and powerful. I've said this before, but it bears repeating. That you're either a miracle breaker or a miracle maker depending on whether you're listening to the voice of fear or whether you're listening to the voice of love. That's it. So you are responsible for this. Okay? If you don't like what you are experiencing right now, don't look outside and blame anybody for it. But rather, look within your own psyche, your own mind, to understand what really is producing these phenomena that we are experiencing in time and space. So to end this here, I want to give you an imagery of something from the way of mastery. It's really calling about dropping pebbles in the pool of awareness. So look, we can look at, I have a, a pool right here in this complex right now. And if I take a pebble and I drop that pebble into the pool, what happens? We see the ripples come from that pebble that we have just dropped into the, the pool of awareness. So if we don't like what we are experiencing in time and space, look, it's because we have dropped pebbles into the pool of awareness. We have dropped pebbles of lack, of limitation, of suffering, of death, of fear, and so forth. When we drop those pebbles into the pool of awareness, what do we experience? We experience the ripples the effect of us dropping those pebbles full of sin and darkness and shame into this pool. But you know what? We can choose again. We can choose again. Right now, you and I are together. We're one. We are interacting with the mind of God right now. And so right now, we can really choose again and change our past by creating a new tomorrows. Tomorrows. By dropping into, you see, let's just assume right here at the top of this video here is the top of the pool, right? And all of this is the pool, okay? So, instead of those pebbles of lack and limitation and fear and death and sabotage that we have placed into this pool and drop it down. Obviously, we're experiencing the effects of it in 3D Technicolor. But again, we can choose again. I can take this pebble here of unlimited, uh, unlimited love, unlimited joy, unli unlimited uh, bliss, and everything that we want to experience and extend to a world that is in desperate need of it. The unconditional love of God. This pebble, this pebble, 
I'm going to drop it right now into the pool of awareness. And guess what? Then I can experience the ripples because I have dropped with love, with holiness, with goodness, what we want to extend to a world and that I want to experience personally as well. Okay? Love is all there is. Choose love, as Terry Prince is saying right now on the comments. Love is all there is. There is no veil that the love of God in us together cannot lift. Cannot lift. And we do, though. We do so, however, through extreme forgiveness. Extreme forgiveness. I'll put it in a, in a different way. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I loose the world from all I thought it was. I thought it was a place of death and suffering, a lack, a loss. Okay? So today, I loose the world then from all I thought it was. But I can choose it again in this moment. That's how powerful my mind is right now to change the world completely. And finally, you know, this is, uh, I'm still using the imagery of us dropping pebbles into the pool of awareness. Um, by saying that we are in a quantum field right now, okay? So the moment in this quantum field that we are in, the moment I press against the quantum field, it comes back, okay? So in the past, the pebbles of loss and limitation and fear and damnation and, sh and shame and hell and all of that stuff, okay? Uh, we have dropping those pebbles into our pool of awareness, okay? And because we're in a quantum field, that is why we are experiencing the effect of it right now. Okay? But in the quantum field, what is really happening naturally are the waves that are occurring in our minds. Uh, the wave in the quantum field. Those waves are natural. But what is unnatural is when we allow that voice of fear, the electrons and the tro uh, protons and the neutrons coming in, into the wave and disrupting it. That is what we are doing. We are sabotaging ourselves by our own thoughts because we think that our thoughts are, are, are neutral. Your th our thoughts are not neutral. Our thoughts are are full of charge. The world itself is neutral and we should approach it accordingly, folks. And Trisha, hi, it's good to see you. Many hearts and love and light to you as well. I love you all so much, friends. And I'm really trying to nav navigate myself through Facebook Live. I really am. And uh, really, you know, I'm going to just end up here, uh, end this session here with you by just sa saying to you what was given to me about seven, eight years ago. I love you, Terry. I was going to the gala in Miami uh, with a friend, and we had a wonderful time together. We really did. And, um, and I went home that night and I got up the next morning and I had an experience that was palpable. I, it was absolute. It was intense, but beautiful and full of light. And I, and I, I experienced that emotion of love, that feeling of love. And I said to my source and I said, what would, what would I do with this? What would you have me do? What would you have me 
say in this moment? And the voice said, you have to create an online presence that is virtual and interactive and uh, extending the principles of A Course in Miracles to the world that really needs to it. And the moment I did that, I created the Academy of Spiritual Awakening, which is what you are on right now. It's an online, interactive presence of love. When that occurred, by the way, I was very skeptical about it. And I asked, give me a sign, give me a symbol that this is true. And right when I did, I turned the TV over and Jeb Bush at that time was saying, all education in this world is moving toward an online presence and not a physical brick and, and, board and wood house or a building that all of that is occurring right now and that's what's happening right now. So I'm really trying to navigate myself through this technology, whether it's helpful for me to just do this one-on-one -on -one with you right now and respond to you or to have my students here or do that with the students privately. I don't know. They like it with it. They like it without it. I have no idea. So, nevertheless, I am moving forward without fear, with confidence and conviction and belief that we can change the world together. We can change the world together. And so we are doing this right now. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can ask right now. And even when Facebook Live is over, I can still respond to you. Okay, and, and don't forget anything, uh, don't forget uh, this as well. If no one has told you today that they love you, allow me to be the first. I love you so much and you are pure light.